Hi, if you're interested in using Q&A in your Teams meetings, then you're in the right place. We're going to have a preview look at Q&A as it shows up right now in the preview build of Teams. We've got new videos on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams coming out every Tuesday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out. My name's Gavin Jones and I'm a founder at MeTime where we help people save time at work to do more of the things they love. I'm a former transformation manager for a Fortune 500 company and I help other companies save a significant amount of time by moving all of their internal processes to Microsoft 365. If you're interested in finding out more about working together, then stick around until the end to find out a bit more about how we can connect. But for right now, let's go and have a quick look at Q&A in a Microsoft Teams meeting. And so if we send that meeting and then go back into it, this is how it tells you to set up Q&A in the Microsoft documentation. And we can add a new tab using this plus here once we've sent that meeting. So if we add a tab, then that's adding sort of an app and we can pick that Q&A app. Or uh, well, there's a lot of other third party apps now that you can use in Teams meeting when they pick that Q&A app. If you didn't do it ahead of the meeting, I'm gonna show you how to join it once you started the meeting. And depending on how you set the meeting up and whether there's external participants or whether it's a channel meeting, then and if you've got preview of Teams or not, then this might not show up for you, which is why I wanted to go through it. So click more actions and then add an app. And you can see we've got a slightly different order than we did in the previous one. And you can scroll down and try and find it. It's Q&A. If you hit Q, we'll get the one we want. So that's the Microsoft Q&A app. And when we click that, we're going to get loads and loads of information, which we probably don't need. It's quite straightforward. We'll click add. And this is probably why you want to set it up before the meeting starts. And you've got a few options. So you can allow attendees to ask new questions and respond to conversations. I'm not sure what happens if you don't let them ask new questions, because presumably that's the whole point of having Q&A in your meeting. And if you wanted to, similar to live events, you could then moderate the attendee conversations. So that once someone asks a question, only you as the organizer can see it until you choose to publish it. So it sort of gets rid of some of the dross. But if you're working in an organization where someone's likely to ask those difficult questions, I would suggest that you need to probably change the culture of your organization rather than just moderating the Q&A. But that's just me. So we'll click save, we'll leave it as the default. So setting up your Q&A tab. And then everybody else is then going to see, which I have fed back to Microsoft, both the chat conversation here and the Q&A. So it's very similar to if you run a webinar in Zoom, you still get chat and you get Q&A. I think that's quite confusing. So if you were gonna set this up ahead of time, you could come out into your meeting options and then turn off meeting chat. So then at least it's more obvious that people should use Q&A and not chat. If you leave both on, then I think that it will get quite confusing about whether someone should ask a question in a Q&A or ask a question in chat, especially if they're not used to this because it's brand new and chat is the thing that they've been used to using for the past two years. And so I think you're better off turning chat off myself. But anyway, Q&A app is then down by the side and obviously you can see look, ask a question or start a discussion uh, are two of the options. So post, that's a discussion and if she defaults back to ask a question and it makes a nice little box. This is a question. You've got some like formatting options. You can put a link in, a list if you want to. Probably a bit of overkill for uh, Q&A, I would suggest. And then obviously there's only me in the meeting right now. But whether it's a question or a discussion, you can reply. Anyone can reply because that's what we set up in the settings. And then whether it's a question or a discussion, you can give it a thumbs up or some other emoji, which interestingly are different emojis than the ones in chat which is odd so in chat which you can you can do all these ones if i did a quick chat and then someone wanted to give me a, a little emoji from there the same things but different icons which uh, i'm not sure if they if microsoft are going to align that at any point in time but it seems a bit slower as is and a bit more jerky but it is preview so on the question we can do the same thing we can give it a thumbs up again further back to microsoft that an upvoting system in their q a app would be good so we can sort it uh, based on what's been upvoted. You can't sort it on the amount of emojis at the moment. It's either all conversations, all questions, so you can get rid of the discussions, or, or unanswered questions. So this one's unanswered, and I'm gonna say, this is a question. Yes, it is. Great answer for that. You notice that unlike chat, when you hit enter, it, there's a new line by default, and you have to click post. If it's a question, as the organizer, 
or the moderator, you've got the ability to mark best answer, which I think is getting a little bit above your station because it doesn't allow you to do that if you're the attendee. And obviously, if you're the moderator, you're the most likely person that's going to be answering it. So for you to mark your own homework and say, well, this one is the best answer because I've answered it um, seems a little bit big headed. But maybe that's just my humble British upbringing, perhaps. Um, not sure. Let's go back onto all conversations. So the difference for the discussion then is that you don't get to mark something, uh, but you can go and edit your own posts. You do still be able to edit your own posts with a question or an answer, but that isn't as obvious as the discussion one, because that's, uh, I guess they've got no use for the tick, so they've put edit there instead. So slightly getting a bit more useful, as I put on some of the forums and fed back to Microsoft, I think it is getting really confusing for normal users. I'm thinking like salespeople that just need to go and sell stuff and not really professional IT people that know all about Q&A and webinars and all the stuff. And you might say they don't need to, perhaps, but I think for a normal organization that isn't techie, that just wants to do, look, I just want to do like a, either a webinar type format where it's one to many, and I don't want them to be on camera, and I don't want them to be able to uh, interact, I want them to be on, on mute, and it's just sort of a one to many sort of download. You then might want a Q&A section more than a chat. You don't want to keep chatting, everything keeps pinging up. You just want like sort of uh, Q&A, moderated or not, and be able to have an upvote system where you could see like the top uh, questions and then go to those. At the end, uh, when you've got time, you can just go through the ones that have been upvoted the most first and anything else you can get to later. That seems a cool idea to me. This is sort of halfway house. We've got chat and Q&A at the same time. Microsoft now have also got webinars. They've got live events, which are very similar. Live events have got Q&A by default. Webinars aren't really much different to a normal meeting, apart from you can have a sign-up form before you start, which again is probably unlikely to be used internally. Live events are a bit more of a faff to set up internally, and they've got a delay because of the technology behind it, because it can go to loads and loads and loads of people more so than a normal meeting. So my idea is to just have like, either it's a normal meeting or it's a webinar format. And if it's webinar, you either want professional or you just want like, you know, bargain basement with do it yourself. And so I think those are the best options, but that's just me. And in the like, in the webinar one, you can have Q&A and the chat turned off. In a normal meeting, you'd have chat on and Q&A off, and you could you know change the defaults if you wanted to. But having a complete melee of having chat, Q&A as an app, if you set it beforehand or not, it, I think it's going to get probably not used very much. But who am I? to say but this is a preview hopefully they might take some of my suggestions on board that would be great if you think the same then let me know in the comments below and uh, see if we can get uh, something changed what's the feature you would like most in teams q a let me know in the comments below so that was a quick look at q a in preview of teams if you can't find it yet it's because it's not in general release and you haven't got the preview of Teams available for you. If you're getting confused about all of the developments in Microsoft 365, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. So we've got a new video coming out every Tuesday on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams. If you want to save time for your employees in your whole organization, then that's what I do. So I'd probably be able to help you. If you want to jump on a call, then click the, one of the links in the description below. We've got free Teams training deck there as well and a pre-recorded webinar if you want to go on that. If you're in the food and beverage industry, probably best to link up on LinkedIn because occasionally we run some live workshops which are really interactive every three or four weeks. So if you want to get one of those, let's link up on LinkedIn and have a quick chat. If you want to call, then there's a call link below as well. Thanks for watching so far. Before you leave, click the thumbs up button. If you like this video, it really helps us in the YouTube algorithm. And if you really liked it, consider buying me a beer using the link in the description below. It really helps support the channel and keep free content coming out on YouTube. So thanks for watching so far, and we'll see you in the next video.